Hi guys, this is Margarita and in this video I will show you how I do a dry manicure on myself using e-file and also how to do a very easy nail overlays with a new elastic base gel and I will give you some tips I found really helpful when doing your own nails, so stay with me. I have removed all gel and now I want to give a squall shape, uh, meaning square shape with soft rounded corners. For that I'm using 180 grit and when I already when I'm satisfied with the shape I buff the nails with 240 grit file to smooth the edges. And did you know, guys, that uh, the ratio of the width of a nail to its to its length uh, is different for each finger? For example, um, little finger should have the shortest nail, and index with ring finger same length, while the middle finger and thumb finger should be longer than uh, the other fingers. And believe it or not, this will change the look of your manicure completely. To get that rounded shape, I run the file around the side like this, from the side wall of the nail all the way around the top corner. I'm taking an orange stick and put it in parallel angle and gently push back and forth. I'm not using a lot of pressure, I just slightly scrap any dead tissue under the cuticle. So what I'm doing is I'm opening the pocket under the cuticle and I'm going to clean out the entire dead skin which is called pterygium. And we have to do all the steps to prepare the nail plate for a further cut of the cuticle. And pay attention to the corners, uh, because I saw a lot of people, they uh, are missing the corners and there is a lot of dead skin under, underneath and that will cause a lifting of your gel application in the future. So also for the perfect and clean manicure we need a right tool and as you know there is plenty of different cuticle pushers, removers, etc. But my preference is using an orange stick and I think it's much safer, especially for beginners and you know people who are doing their own nails. And I think it's much harder to damage your skin with an orange stick rather than with a, a cuticle pusher. I also do everything dry without any water or solution for cuticle removal. I found that water actually affects uh, further product application and can even damage the nail under the gel. After I push back all the skin, um, I'm going through uh, with my orange stick to check if I can move the stick under the cuticle easily. And if you feel the stick is uh, kind of stuck, that means you still have the skin glued to the nail plate. Uh, but before we are moving to e-file, we need to make sure that all skin is detached from the nail plate and everything is clean underneath. So you should frequently dust off uh, and check, like, take a look if you see any glued skin to the nail. I'm showing an example on this image and if you see some similar, you need to work more on this area to make sure you uh, push it back. For the next step, I'm using diamond bead with 2.1 diameter with a red cut and it's a flame shape with sharp edge, so you need to be very careful. And also I have sensitive thin skin and kind of thin cuticle, but all of our fingers are very different and for example, if you have thick cuticle and lots of dead skin to remove, you might want to go with a blue bead. But again, for beginners, I always recommend to use uh, red beads. And also I would like to cover some terminology so we all speak the same language. And the flame shape bead consists of the tip, left and right cheeks and the belly. 
The most important here is a bit placement. So when I work with a nail plate, it's important to increase the contact area of the bead and the nail plate. It means that we never put the sharp bead point in front while we're supposed to work with the cheek part of the bead. Also, we don't work with the body of the bead only when we do side walls. So let's look closer how the right placement looks like. As you can see, the cheek of the bead is parallel to the nail plate, so there is a 45 degree angle between the nail bead and uh, sorry, the nail bead handle and the actual nail plate. And also, the bead should be placed 30 degrees in relation to the central axis of the nail. It is marked as a red line on the picture on your right. And if you place your bead just straight into the proximal fold, you might overfile and damage the nail. So I think I'm done with my theory part. And let me know, guys, if that's something you like, this new format with illustrations, because when I was watching some of YouTube videos, I was really struggling to understand the correct way of doing the manicure. So I would really appreciate any of your feedbacks. Let's see now how it looks uh, on the actual nails. So I'm going to use a 13,000 RPM speed and forward on my electric drill. You can actually go up to 15,000 speed. It depends which speed is the most comfortable for you. Um, so while it's in forward, I'm going to start from the center and I'm just going around to the left and lay down the side. I'm barely touching the cuticle and keep in mind that we are removing a dead skin, we're not filing the actual nail plate or applying any pressure to it. Let me show you another index finger. So again I'm keeping the bead flat and I'm placing the bead inside the proximal fold, but again I'm barely touching the skin and only with the cheek part of the bead, but not with a sharp edge. And I'm doing that in light circular motions without any pressure. Otherwise, you might overfile the nail. So we should be really careful here. And another important thing I want to mention is you always have to push away the skin around the nail so you can actually see what you're filing. It's really challenging when you're doing your own nails and as you can see I lift in the skin with my thumb. I go through the corners a couple times to make sure that we removed uh, anything in there as well. And then I'm moving on the side walls and here I'm going to use uh, the belly part of the bead. And if you have really thick and dry skin in there, I would recommend to use uh, a blue bead uh, to make sure you remove completely uh, the dry skin. So when I'm done with one side, I'm switching to reverse in my machine and using the same speed. So again, I'm doing pretty much the same thing. I'm starting from the center of the nail and I'm moving uh, down to the side. And when you file down the side, it smooths your skin and blends any hand nails you might have. Another rule for e-filing is to keep your uh, to balance your hand and keep your wrist fixed. And this actually thing really helped me a lot um, because this way you will have a, a full control over the e-file. And that will ensure that you're not going to overfile the nail and damage your skin. So I'm going to show you another bead with blue abrasive. Uh, and you want to use it in case if you have uh, a lot of dead skin and your skin is really dry. Uh, so that bead works really great for complete beginners as well because it has this nice rounded tip and it's not sharp so it's it's very safe to work with and especially because blue bead uh, they are more coarse than uh, the red one so yeah you want to make sure that uh, you know we won't damage your nail so this cone uh, shaped bead I, I think is the best option to go with the speed for this bead is pretty much the same. Uh, I think I'm using here 14,000 rotations per minute. 
After we pushed all cuticle and removed the all pterygium, the next step I'm going to trim the cuticle and for that I'm using the cuticle scissors. I'm sorry guys, when I was putting the video together, I noticed that I didn't really capture the cutting cuticle part really well. Uh, I just moved my hand too far and I, I didn't record it on the camera. But I promise I will record another video with uh, dry manicure preparation and it's going to be more detailed. And right now I'm going to show you also another finger. So I'm grabbing the white line. Uh, that's where the dead skin is and that's the part we have to cut with the lower blade of the scissors and very slowly start cutting the cuticle from the right to the left because I'm right-handed and the blades cut straight up and down perpendicular to the skin and I'm doing this really slowly my goal is to cut one cohesive piece because this way you will get a smooth edge but you can also cut piece by piece, especially if you have thin uh, skin and not much to trim. And we're almost there, just a few more steps left. So I always like to refine the pocket after I'm done trimming the cuticle. Um, so basically I just take my orange stick and I go through um, the area under the cuticle over, uh, all over again, same way as I did in the beginning when I was pushing my cuticle. You might think guys it's not an important step and that's something you can miss, but let me tell you that in order to achieve the flawless application of gel polish or any other gel, or you know to have this long lasting good looking manicure, I encourage you to try uh, these extra steps and I'm sure you will see the difference. And of course, I cannot miss this step as well. Um, I'm taking a sand buffer polisher and I'm buffing uh, all skin around the nail, uh, side walls, the cuticle area. Uh, this is very soft buff, you won't damage the nail or anything like that. And just make sure that the speed you're working uh, on is around 10 or 12,000 rotations per minute, not more. Otherwise, uh, you might feel, you know, heat. So I'm just going through all nails and, you know, that will uh, help me to get rid of uh, all any hand nails you might have on the side walls and it smooths out and blends the skin really nicely and I'm not afraid here to uh, touch the nail plate with its buffer because it's very soft, it's very high grit uh, so again it won't damage or overfile your nail so that will also help to prep uh, the nails before the application and you know going through all the steps here there is no chance that any pterygium is still left on your nail and that will definitely ensure nice and long-lasting application and will prevent any further liftings of the product and of course now we have to clean properly all our nails making sure there is no dust no dead skin left and what I really like to do is to wrap uh, the lint-free wipe around the orange stick and clean the area under the cuticle because again, <clears throat> if there is any dust left, it might cause lifting. So it's very important step, pay attention, make sure you cleaned everything, everything under the nail. Now I'm going to apply a nail prep from Inhype just to make sure that um, I dehydrate all my nails because my nails is, are, are oily and I just like to use this step um, and the insurance of, um, you know, that I, I'm not going to have any lifting issues. Uh, but again, it depends on your nail and the elastic base we're going to apply has really good adhesion. So if you if you don't have a nail prep, you might want to try just applying elastic base uh, right on your nail plate. I just brush it on and leave it to air dry for 15 seconds. 
And for my uh, gel nail overlays, I decided to go with this pretty shade from In Hyper Elastic Base. Uh, it calls Chiffon. It's very pretty light beige color, semi sheer coverage, but again, it's buildable. You can get more opaque if you want to. And if you are interested uh, to see other colors, there is a short video that um, show the swatches and short overview of other shades of elastic base. Um, I will put the link down below. Okay, guys, so I'm going to show you application step by step in a very slow mode. Just keep that in mind. So first layer I am applying is very, very thin. I almost rub the product into the nails and this layer is very important as it is a slip layer and it will set the area where the next thicker layer will be spread. So you want to make sure that you have straight lines on the sides and under the cuticle. And if you didn't remove the dead skin properly, uh, you know, in our first stage of the manicure, it will be hard for you to make those straight lines and also the product might leak on the side walls. If you have very thin nails and you experience lifting from the edge of the nail, I would recommend to cap the edge of the nail like I just did because that will prevent any humidity to get under the product you apply, so that will help you with the lifting issue. Please note I didn't cure the first layer and I'm grabbing a bigger bit of the product. So depending on the size of the nail bed, you're going to decide how much gel you need to grab. And maybe you won't get it right from the first time, but with practice you will see like how much product you need so you can spread easily on the whole nail. I'm given some time, so the drop of the gel comes down to the nail slowly. And only after that I'm touching, I'm barely touching the gel and moving it towards the edge, creating this central line where I want to have the most product for the correct architecture of the nail. So at this point uh, I check if there is enough of the gel. If I put enough of the product on the nail, it would start spreading by itself. Uh, so you see it's not happening here. It means that I need to add more product. So after I added more product, I check again. And it's really important to work with the right volume because only when you work with a good volume of the product, you will be able to build that perfect structure of the nail. And now the gel starts spreading by itself. And I grab a thin brush and start pulling the gel towards the sides to fill them. So you want to have less product on the side than on the central axis of your nail. Um, that's the correct structure of the nail. Um, and at the same time you want to make sure you have even amount of the product on the sides. And since I have squall shape of the nail, I just... Uh, pulling the product in straight lines toward the edge. But if you have, for example, an oval shape, then you would want to make the movements that will reflect the oval shape of the nail. So now turn the finger upside down to shape the apex. And I'm watching how the gel is distributed and where I want to form my apex. I have pretty long and flat nails, so I know that I have to keep my finger parallel to the table in order to my, my apex to have the right placement. But you have to adjust the angle depending on where the apex is being formed on your nails, as we have all different shapes and different nails. So that's how my nail turned out and I'm really satisfied with the shape. But for example, like I'm showing here, if you have too much product on the edge, you can take your liner brush or brush th from the bottle and just move the gel where you feel, um, you know, it will improve uh, the shape of the nail. So I'm just showing here, but I'm really satisfied how it looks like. Um, I can see that I have even distribution of the product and uh, it is semi-sheer coverage, 
but if you want to get it more opaque you can apply one more layer and that's probably what I will do and another tip on how to understand that there is enough product just look at the light reflection so I'm here showing my thumbnail I used a round lamp so you guys can see the reflection on my nails and on this picture the outline of the re reflection isn't even I mean on the left picture that means when you see uh, the reflection like this one uh, you do not have enough volume and the coverage is uneven so before cure your nail you need to uh, add more product while on the right picture the lines are smooth and beautiful and if we turn the finger we see the beautiful lines from each angle and another thing we are looking at uh, before getting the nail cured is how even is the distribution of the product and we are looking at the nail from the edge angle like this so basically we need to make sure that we have even distribution of the product so there is no too much product in the center or maybe there is too much product on one of the sides so before getting the nail cured we need uh, to fix it and uh, move the product so it's even for 60 seconds in LED lamp and that's what I have um, as you can see it's semi-transparent uh, I really like though but I probably will apply one more thin layer uh, just to add more coverage um, and the video is really getting so long so maybe I will uh, now show you another finger how I'm going to build up the apex um, in a, in a normal speed mode so you can see how the gel self levels and you know uh, the speed of the process of application process applied uh, the base coat on all nails and now we can go ahead and apply any color gel polish but I really like this beige um, uh, coverage so I'm just going to seal um, the coating with a top coat 
uh, because even even when uh, this elastic base is fully cured it still has uh, a tacky layer like this sticky layer so it, it's still cured you just need to apply uh, a top coat and that's it and you are done Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. By the way, subscribe to our Instagram page as we have more products overviews on that page. It's uh, in Hype Nails and of course I will uh, leave all information below in the comment section. Thank you, bye bye.